In this video, we'll see how we can identify returns to scale. Recall when we're identifying returns to scale, we increase both inputs, labor and capital by the same amount. In general, we'll call that amount Z. It could be two or three. Once we've increased both K and L by this factor Z, we see what happens to the production function. Does it increase by more than Z, less than Z, or just Z? We'll work through these three examples. Our first example has a production function, the square root of k times l. That's just equal to k to the half times l to the half. So that's a form of the cobb duckless production function, where the exponents, alpha and beta, add up to 1. This is a particular type of cobb duckless production function. So we increase both k and l by the same factor, z. What we do now is to expand and simplify. That's cos z squared times k times l. We can take the z squared outside the square root sign. The square root of z squared is just z. So in this case, we see that when we increase both k and l by a factor of z, the production function also increases by a factor of z. The square root of k l is just our original production function, and we've increased it by z. So for any value of z, this type of production function exhibits constant returns to scale. Where we have a production function of this form, where the exponents are alpha and beta sum to 1, then we'll always have constant returns to scale. Our next example also has the square root of capital and the square root of labour, but this time we're adding them. So once again, we increase both k and l by a factor z. We expand and simplify. We can rewrite like this and collect like terms. And so we'll have the square root of z times the square root of k plus the square root of l. This is our original production function. We can substitute in there. So here we can see if we increase the inputs to this production function by a factor of z, output increases by something less than z, the square root of z. So if we double both capital and labor, output will increase by a little more than 1.4. In this case, we'll have decreasing returns to scale. This is our third example. Our production function this time is k squared plus l squared. Once again, we increase both capital and labor by a factor z. We can expand and collect like terms. So we'll have z squared times k squared plus l squared. This is our original production function. So we have z squared times our original production function. Where z is greater than 1, for example 2, if we increased both labour and capital by 2, and then output will increase by 2 squared, 4. For this type of production function, we have increasing returns to scale. This is the general process we go through to test returns to scale. We increase both inputs by the same amount, expand and simplify, and then see how the output is changed. Whether output increases by the same proportion as the inputs, or by a factor more, or by a factor less.